Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrews. Welcome to a uh, blended service. It's so great to have all you all here. God is almighty and all-powerful, but he still sent his son to die on the cross and bear our sins out of his deep love for us. We thank and praise him for all that he has done. Let's stand if we're able. We're good God, God Almighty, I hope you'll find. I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. I can't count the times I've called your name some broken night. You showed up and patched me up like you do every time. I get amnesia. I forget that you keep coming around. There ain't no way you'll ever let me down. Say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like sun in the morning, I know you're gonna be there every day. So what on earth could make me be afraid, afraid? Well, good God Almighty, I hope you'll find Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Well, good God Almighty. I hope Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Amen. 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 You may give a hand clap to yes, God. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Maybe seated. it. Yes. And we welcome everybody this morning to our unity service. Praise God. We welcome all of those who are watching on our various media, social media platforms. And we welcome those who are here live and in person. And prayerfully, hopefully, we're going to experience God in an amazingly awesome way because our God is amazing. So let's be excited. Let's worship him in any way that you feel comfortable. And Pilts will elaborate on that one. That's right. Because <laughs> he That's does right. it well. God is good, and we give thanks to this community in all ways, shapes, and forms. Those that are here, those that are worshiping virtually, family, friends, and guests, and visitors, we welcome you here to this place, and we give thanks that you are here. Today, we begin a whole new series in the month of September on Jesus, the divine person. Jesus, the divinity. Today, we focus on love. Not the love we talked about last week, but the love of divinity this week. Divine love is completely giving, unconditional, a kind of love you and I cannot in our humanity give 
But when you and I choose to live in that divine love, we have the capacity to be that kind of love. And yet, in a world of division, chaos, destruction, wealth accumulation, illnesses, losses, and wants and desires, divine love seems unrealistic. Something of a fairy tale. And yet, we have seen it. The question for all of us today is how do you believe it? Notice how I said how, not if. How do you believe in that divine love? And as Pastor Faye said, let us worship in amazing ways. So if you need to stand up and clap, if you need to sit and be pensive, sit and be pensive. If you need to stand up and do backflips, do those except for you, James, because I don't want you back in the hospital. But other than you, anybody else can do a backflip right now. Raise your hands as you need to. But let the Holy Spirit descend upon this place. And let the Holy Spirit descend upon into you and your heart. That no matter what you're carrying with you today. No matter what worries. No matter what guilt. No matter what shame. No matter what concerns. No matter what pain. May that Holy Spirit work within you in a new way. And may you be reborn into that love. Amen. Let us yes, amen. begin with our call to worship. Yes. Which... Normally, we do this in our second service, so people are used to standing if we, uh, when we do this. So if you want to, you may stand during this time. The call to worship is in your bulletin, but yes. let us call the worship. And it reads as follows. Followers of Christ, God calls us just as we are to live as truth tellers and gospel bringers in the world. God, we know you call us, and still we ask. Who am I that, that you would call me? Like Moses standing before the burning bush, convinced of his unworthiness to lead your people out of bondage, we ask. Who am, who am I that, that you would call me? Like Peter who thought he got it right, only to realize that who Jesus is doesn't meet his expectations of who a Savior should be, we ask. Who am, who am I, I that, that you would call me? As we raise this question to God today, we open our hearts to receive God's answer. You, you are, are my beloved children. children. You, you are, are my disciples. disciples. You, you are, are my people called, called to share the love of God for the transformation of the world. Amen. 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 So we are in a blended service. So there are hymnals at your seats. You may have to share them. That's okay. Get cozy with people that you maybe you don't know or maybe you do know. Look up number 156. I love to tell the story. You probably know this well. Let's sing as loud as we can. Stand if you're able. And sing nice and loud.
Amen. Amen, yes. It, it seems like there's a theme developing here. Love. Love. Absolutely. We've just had two songs about love. Somehow we're going to talk about love today. Yes. So how should we pass the peace if we're talking about love? Pass the peace and pass. love. And should people find somebody they don't know since we are yes. a whole family in a church? Yes. But with two services that don't always come together? So go say hello to somebody you don't know. Yes, and introduce yourself. Amen. All right. All right. So, am I on? I'm on. Yeah, okay. All right, enough uh, saying hello to each other. Let's continue here. So, we know it's a joint service because it's a holiday weekend. So, we don't always get a lot of people out to this service, but we get enough that there's enough of a mingling between both groups. So, <coughs> life of the church. You can look in your bulletin. There's lots of announcements. What's happening on the 23rd of September? War Mr. Days and Worship Fest. Yes. Oh, and then here is Pam with two clipboards. On these clipboards are how you can sign up just for an hour or more. Like if you're like, I got my entire day that I could just sit there, then you could sign up for the entire day, Jim. Uh, just so you know. You have very Yes, it's, it's generous of me to offer that, but I'm offering that to anybody. You could do three, if you want to do the next three weeks, you could do that too. Anyway, these are here. What was that? Say that one more time. Yeah. No, you're not going to arm wrestle. You know what? I'm okay if eight people sign up for the same slot and then we have nobody for another slot because you know what? God will figure it out, God will provide. Or they can sign up for both, that's right. <laughs> so these will be in the back um, because I'm, when I used to sit in the pews and these things get passed around, I was like, that's ridiculous. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but they're going to be in the back. So you can take your own, um, uh, what, cognizance to sign up for them. If not, you're going to get a bunch of emails from me. So I would just sign up for them. So yeah, that's, oh, you have a question?
Uh, Carson is right off of Davisville Road. Probably 10 minutes. 10 minutes? It's right next to what is now called Accent, used to be Prometica, right next to Gloria Day. Yeah, I don't know what's, uh, Byberry in Davisville, is that the cross street there? It's like right there? Yeah, it's like 10 minutes from here. And Warminster Days is at the Warminster Park? Community Park, which is only about 10 minutes, maybe 15 from here at the most. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the rest is in your bulletin, but we have a special guest that you have seen before. So I'm going to have Megan come up here. Many of you remember when she was here to give um, her testimony, but we have an exciting project happening. She's going to give a quick little update on to the project that she talked about and then what we're going to be doing with her and the church. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you guys again. Good morning. Um, yeah, so a couple cool updates, um, things that have happened with Grace Project since... Who was all here the last time that I was in the church? Okay, so most of you know what the Grace Project is. Um, for those who don't, it's the nonprofit that I founded in 2020, Our Missions Restoring Hope Through Acts of Kindness. We have three programs, um, one for individuals out in Kensington that are homeless, which has kind of become like a resource hub. Um, people in other areas that are homeless call us for resources, um, for treatment, homeless resources, stuff along those lines. Um, our Hope for the Holidays program, <coughs> which is for families, so we sponsor them for the holidays. Um, we get wish lists for the children, get them you know, items directly off their wish list, wrap them, deliver them, Christmas trees, stuff like that. Um, and then our Give a Little Hope program for children that are impacted by poverty, addiction, or sickness. And it's kind of like make a wish, but on a smaller scale and more inclusive, like um, they don't have to be terminal if they have sickness. So that's the brief rundown of what the Grace Project is. So the last time that I was here, we did not have a van yet. And one of the things that we were working towards getting and what brought me here was that um, Steph from Sowers Cares had organized a fundraiser to get us a van to make our Kensington outreach trips a lot easier for us. Um, you know, we were all using our, our cars, barely anyone had SUVs, so we were bringing out all of these items, and you know, our tables were broken into tons of different people's cars, we were getting there at different times. Um, so they were successful in this fundraiser and they got us a custom van. Um, so we now have all of our tables in one place, all of our cleanup equipment, we have snacks, um, you know, plates, stuff like that. So everything that we need every week is stored in one place. Our setup went from taking about 40 minutes to it takes us about 10 minutes now. Um, yeah, so that, that has been absolutely amazing and the van is gorgeous. I actually, did you see the van? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. So I have pictures if anyone wants to see. Um, so we have been talking since then about what we can kind of do together and one of the big things that we need um, is a space. So everything right now, I had my own apartment for a little while, it was way too expensive, so I just, <clears throat> I moved back in with my mom in Warrington um, to save for a house a couple months ago, so now everything is stored at my mom's house. Um, anytime that I take meetings with people, if there's not like a set location, I am meeting them at my mom's house. <laughs> um, so a location would be huge for us. It would allow us to have kind of more professional meetings and more organization. And that is something that we've been discussing in ways that we can kind of work together. Um, outside of that, I know this church has been collecting a lot of items for us to bring out um, to our population out in Kensington, which has been amazing. By the way, all of the cookies went last week. There's a lot more left. <laughs> yeah. Also, I think last week I could only fit probably like 10 boxes of multiple boxes of cookies and they all went they were a huge hit um, and then on top of that one of the things that grace project has been kind of trying to figure out is we get a lot of stuff donated that we ne can't necessarily use um, so a prime example is we had two cans of soup <laughs> that were sitting in the car or in the van and we didn't necessarily know what to do with it because our population has nowhere to cook cans of soup um, so I was able to give it to this church, and I think that that's something that Grace Project can also bring to the table here is, you know, kind of collecting those items that um, people try to donate to us, and usually we have to say no and redirect them someplace else, um, but now we have someplace that we can be working with and we can bring them here. Um, so a lot of cool stuff going on. We're hoping to continue to grow. We've talked at length about even, like, the Give a Little Hope program and what we can do with kind of partnering with this church for that. Um, and I think that's kind of... Yeah, so it's exciting. So a couple things is we all have an office downstairs that isn't being used. So um, we're going to be talking on Tuesday about their organization using it and partnering with us so that we can be part of that ministry in at least a supportive way. 
Um, as you all know, the conference is doing incredibly interesting things at this point in time. I'll use that word as a way to understand what's going on. One of the things they are doing is these things, they are, they're, they're, again, it's a little convoluted, but they're called hope centers. Essentially, it's for churches to do some type of outreach in the community, and we become kind of a center for that. So I'm thinking one of the um, end results of this could be us becoming a hope center in our church with their ministry and potentially other ministries like Youth Valley House. So there's some greater things that potentially could happen. I don't know the details of that yet. Um, it may allow open up for some grants and some other things, but um, this could be an incredible partnership for us. Um, our council of ministries had said they wanted to do local ministries. It's Kensington, so it's somewhat local, um, but we know there are people here um, in this area that are still um, affected by this and that uh, Megan does work within people around here. And there has been somebody who at worship committee, um, actually in Com 2, has said they're not going to go to Kensington. And guess who called me this week? That person and says, okay, I think God talked to me. I'll go to Kensington with you. And that's a member from this church. I'm not going to share that name. That person can share that piece of the story. Um, but that's the influence we're having. So we're going to figure some of this stuff out. We'll stumble a little bit. Uh, but you may see her. You may see some people you don't know downstairs in meetings. Um, let's just be gracious with that, and we'll figure it all out. Um, so I'm excited this is happening. I'm excited we can make this a hope center. Um, and I have done ministry in Kensington, so my heart's there too. So for us as a church to do that kind of ministry um, is incredible because addiction is just unreal. I don't know what other word to use there. So um, anyway, so let's pray for Megan and for this entire ministry and for this partnership that we're about to enter into. All right, let's go to Pastor Faye. Can you come up here too? Can I borrow that back from you? Um, and as good Methodists, we love to put our hands up. Yes. I don't know where that came from. Maybe Wesley did it one day on the mountain as he was preaching. So it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't really matter. We don't have that. You don't need to put up because we're praying for you. So you're going to yes, stand between us. Yes, yes. Because we're putting our hand up over you. You yes, can. You can put yes. your hand up over us. You can. Because yes, it, yes you can do that. Yes. So, all right. <laughs> Let's pray. Yes. Oh, good and gracious God, here we are about to embark on a partnership, something that we don't know what it'll look like yet, but yet in your good graces, in your amazing way of blessings, it will flourish in ways that will help people reach people and let people know love because it is your love that drives us to help each other. It is your love that creates in us a way forward to deal with conflict and division in a way that allows harmony and peace to exist. Yes, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all things, God. We thank you for dear sister Megan here, God, and for her heart in the right direction towards those who are housing challenge, those who are suffering from all kinds of addictions, God. You are the healer, the restorer, the reconciliator, God, the mind regulator. You are the one who can banish all things, God. So we thank you, God, and we ask for your presence in this ministry that we're about to partake of, God, that you will bless this ministry, God, that it will improve the lives of those who are suffering, that it will find peace, and God, and healing, and in your mighty and matchless name, Jesus the Christ, we ask, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, that's it, they are, I know, it's hard, it's hard. Yeah, you could give a round of applause. Yes, yes. That is so awesome. Yes. So, lots of things are happening, and you'll continue looking at the bulletin for the rest. Recognition of service and ministry. It's recognizing our entire music program, but there was one person we're going to recognize, and unfortunately, they're not here. Um, a second person is also not here, too, as part of the music ministry. Sam was going to do a solo. It's in your bulletin. Sam is sick. About midnight last night, I got the text that he's really sick with a fever, and it's not breaking, so he cannot be here today. Um, but he is our new choir director, and most people in f a second service know him. People in first service didn't, so we wanted him to hear and sing. He's a wonderful musician, uh, very talented. So just prayers for him as he heals. Um, we're just going to sing a different song. Um, however, the other person is Charlie, who usually sits in the back there with the drums. He was our substitute because Terry likes to get injured often, and he has a love-hate relationship with hospitals, so he likes to keep going back and forth and getting operated on. So he couldn't play the drums for a large portion of time, and Gary found this person who had kind of a set amount of time that they could help, and they were driving over an hour to be here. 
to play every week. Um, so we want to celebrate him. He's not here. They are moving to Dover, and something happened with the sale of the house that has caused some turmoil. So we want to pray for him. However, after service, there is a cake out there that it was for him. We're going to eat it anyway. <laughs> There's some fr- we'll take a picture of it, send it to him. There's um, some fruit and stuff out there, too. So part of it is just a fellowship for us and a recognition of the music ministry. Um, so if anybody here, for both first and second services, if you're part of the music ministry in any way, please stand. So anybody, first or second service, yep, good. Let's give them a round of applause. It is amazing for a church to have a chancel choir and a praise band. You almost don't find this anywhere in today's churches, at least in the Protestant world. Um, You'll find some that just have a praise band. Then you'll have some that just have a choir, not both. And we have two incredible groups that just keep working tirelessly. So our recognition and ministry service today is for that you may be seated. It's for those individuals that have built that program, continuing that program, and are gifting us with the gift of music. So that cake is for all of us, and we definitely want to say thank you to um, Charlie. Hopefully he'll come back one more time. And we'll still do a kind of thank you to him. Maybe we'll have a second cake on the 24th. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway. All right. We probably will. <laughs> All right. Now let's do some joys and concerns. Maybe something just happened. Okay, anybody on Facebook, if you can't hear us, of course you can't hear what I'm saying right now. (laughs) But we are working. (laughs) I should text them. We are working on, oh, wait, it sounds like it's working. Wait. Okay. I think it's working. (laughs) All right, that was the Holy Spirit. (laughs) All right, go ahead. What's the next (laughs) one? Ken and I are glad to be back among you. Uh, We had a delightful nine-day cruise to New England and parts of Canada, but we really missed you. We watched the services last week, so we felt like we were right here worshiping with you. But it's good to be back, and we love you all and missed you. Great. Thank you. You're so... (laughs) (laughs) So we apologize for those on Facebook if the sound went out. It looks like it's fixed again. Um, Go ahead, got a joy? Yes, Pastor Faye and I had a fabulous visit with Ed and Pat Norris this week, and also Liz Hatch, and they miss everyone. Uh, Pat's getting a treatment this week that she's hoping might help her walk again, and uh, I want to add her during the prayer concerns, obviously. 
but um, we're going to keep on going until we tr capture everybody at home, and um, you may be on the list. You never know. <laughs> I hope I'm on the list. Amen. <laughs> uh, we got Any some good mornings oh. from Facebook, different places like Atlantic City, the Poconos, Harrisburg. All right, that's all the joys I have on my Facebook. Okay, any other joys? Okay. All right, we'll do concerns. Okay. I'd, I'd like to ask you to, to uh, send your prayers to a, a dear friend of mine who's 95. He's in, uh, he was in Holy Redeemer Hospital with a compression fracture. And uh, other than that, I mean, he's been good all, the, all, he's made it to 75 and he's in fairly good shape, but he ha is now being moved to St. Joseph's Manor, which is a part of Holy Redeemer next door. So the, the family is so thrilled that they were able to get, her, get him into St. Joseph's. But please pray for, for Fred Whit Whitlock, who's been in his own home for 60 or 70 years. So we're, we're praying that he, he will continue and be healthy again. But okay. we're, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, prayers for Terry and Lori as they recover from COVID. From who? Terry and Lori. Terry. They have, they have COVID? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, they, they came down at like Wednesday night, I think. Oh. So he should be good next week. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just get a drum machine. <laughs> Wow, okay, we'll pray for them. Any other concerns? Uh, yes, prayers for the Stevenson family who lost their father slash husband this week, uh, dear friends of ours. Okay, and, and like you said, Carolyn, there, Ed did post it that, um, oh. Pat, thank you, is having injections in her back to relieve the pain in her legs, so just prayers for her. Prayers for Vincent. He received his second shot. Hopefully this one works. Good. Yeah. Any other concerns? Prayers for the people in Florida who have just gone through such a terrible hurricane. Yeah. And many have lost their homes. And I heard on the news the other day that insurance companies are pulling out of Florida. So they won't cover them in the future for things like floods and things like that. Uh, continue prayers for the people in California who have gone through the floods and the mudslides. And of course, those in Hawaii who lost their homes due to fire. Yeah, yeah. Tragedy is great. Yeah. Um, I would love it if everyone could pray for um, the Satili family. I had a very close friend of mine, the, the funeral was yesterday, that completed a program called Drug Court with me. He was doing very well for a long time, um, relapsed, and he overdosed and passed away, and he leaves behind um, two children and a wife, and they are worried about, you know, funeral costs, and, um, one of the, the children struggles with depression and um, you know they, they recently called me to help get her into treatment. So the family's facing a lot. Um, the mother's really strong, but the two kids are very young. Um, so prayers for them, please. Just continued prayers for our family as we navigate grief um, and start a school year with very little patience already um, with everything that we're trying to figure out. Yeah. Thank you. And I just want to lift up the unending violence, especially in Philadelphia. It seems like every day someone is being killed, um, the gun shooting, and it's a lot of young people that are dying, and a lot of young folks who are actually doing the killings. And just want to lift up violence and killing all over the world. It needs to stop. We need peace. Jen posted that her best friend Alan's mother passed away um, and to pray for uh, that family. Okay. All right, let us go to the throne of grace. 
Dear precious God, the great I am, you are the creator of everything, God. And everything is under your control. And we know that you are working it out, Lord. And we just have to continue to trust you, to continue to hope and expect. Because every time I pray, God, I pray with expectations. Expectations that you will answer in a favorable way. A way that will heal. A way that will recover. A way that will create peace. A way that will create reconciliation, God. I pray with expectations of those who are living in the streets, God, will find shelter, will find provision. I pray for dysfunctionality in families, the dysfunctionality in the world in general, God. And I pray that you will bind Satan's hands upon the people, God, because we're all your people. And we know that you love us so much. Out of that love, you died, you suffered, God, that we could be reconciled not only to you, but with one another and all of your creation. So, God, we just ask that you lend your ear to our issues, our concerns, God, and we thank you in advance. Yes, yeah, so God, as Pastor Faye said, you are a God that creates and you are a God that loves. So, God, we offer all these prayers to you. We offer our thanksgiving for your blessings that come out of your love and creating for us. Let us see those blessings. But, oh, God, let us fix our eyes on you. Let us focus on you in these moments of doubt, in these moments of tragedy. May we be the love that you are to us, to those that need it. May we be comforted by your spirit. May our hearts be strangely warmed. And may we experience a peace that surpasses all understanding as we navigate this world with you. But, oh God, help us to focus on you and not this world. For we know when we get out of the way, amazing things happen. So continue to guide this church forward. Continue to guide each of us forward. And may we see your glory and your love because of the sacrifice you gave for us, you, in the form of Jesus dying. So let all of us share the same words that Jesus taught so many years ago. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and and the, the glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 So we've started this new piece to how we worship is in this silent time connecting with God in reflection. So let us just take a moment in silence. Take a breath in. In silence. Where is God working within you today? In silence, where is God's love surrounding you today? And now in this silence, as you close your eyes, imagine it is night. It's not too late, but yet it's late enough that the dark has covered all. And this Pharisee approaches Jesus to tell Jesus, you are the one. And yet Jesus realizes that this Pharisee doesn't get it and says to him, unless you recreate yourself, you cannot believe I am the one. Imagine that you are that Pharisee and Jesus is saying to you, you have to create a new in your life to follow me. What do you need to recreate in your life? In this silence, God has given you a gift. Jesus has shown you what you need to recreate. 
rejoice in the blessing of that gift. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the time to reflect on your goodness, to reflect on your love, God. Enable us all to continue to love as you love, to reach out to those who are suffering, to those who need God. And just let us be the love here on earth, God. And in your name, we always say thank you, and we say amen. 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 So what we're doing is, I think it's number 170. Is that right? Uh, yep. So pull out your hymnals. Number 170, stand and sing nice and loud, whatever number 170 is in your hymnal. So we're adding a song here. You may be seated. So remember the last couple Sundays, or at least last Sunday, I was right on time? That's not happening today, <laughs> which is another reason why we have some refreshments out there. So we'll be going over an hour. It's okay. God's still here. You'll be able to get to your parties afterwards. It'll still be okay. But just so we have that expectation up front there. I know, right? Jim's like, oh, I know. I set you guys up, right? Because it was right on an hour the last couple times. Not today. All right, let's hear our Scripture, or we, uh, re, that actually in today's service is not on the screen. Pull out in your bulletins the responsive reading so we can follow along. Yep. And I should grab mine. I'll take, try to make it quicker than he does. <laughs> <laughs> Though we live in a culture that is reluctant to admit guilt, assume responsibility, or ask for forgiveness, we are so bold as to pray the words of the psalmist who said, Search us, O God, and reveal anything in our lives that stands between us and your love. Search us, O God, show us our sins, so that we might confess them. Search us, O God, show us places where we have neglected Christian responsibility, and then teach us how to live on this earth with each other. Search us, O God, show us the faces of those we have wronged, so that we might seek their forgiveness. John 3.16 is one of the many, if not the most, well-known scriptures ever to be memorized and recited. In the Christian Standard Bible, the word so is missing. What is significant or insignificant about this word? In addition, it is interesting that this famous verse that is only found in the Gospel of John, follows the famous scene with Nicodemus. Most scholars do not believe today's scripture is Jesus speaking, but the commentary of the author of the Gospel. How has John 3.16 
helped form your faith. So we'll read from John 3, 16 to 21 from the Christian Standard Bible. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. May God bless this reading and hearing of this word. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I do. Well, maybe. She just went to the restroom. She's avoiding me. Yes. Well, that's okay because the children's message is something we all can do, um, actually. Um, hold on a second. I've got to pull up my little notes here. So it's a series of questions. So just pretend there's a bunch of kids up here, but you're all part of it now, all right? So you raise your hand depending on which one it is. It's your right or left hand. So do you believe it's better to eat six oranges or one piece of chocolate? If it's six oranges, raise your hand. If it's one piece of chocolate, raise your hand. If no, there's no neither. You only get those two choices, Jim. Do you believe it's better to exercise for two hours a day or sleep eight hours a day? Exercise, raise your hand. Sleep eight hours a day, raise your hand. Do you believe you can't wait to become an adult? So this would be if the kids were here. Or believe being a kid is awesome. <laughs> would it still be a kid, right? Yes, yeah. I think we all would answer that at this point, right? Um, do you believe laughing six times a day is healthy or eating whole foods is healthy? Six times, laughing six times or eating whole foods? Laughing, okay. Do you believe I'm a cool pastor or there's something wrong with me? <laughs> Again, remember there's little kids up here doing this. Last question. Do you believe God loves us, that God gives us all, gives us love all the time? Maybe not the love we want, but showers us with blessings. Or do you believe God judges if we don't live a certain way? So does God love us? Does God judge us? All right, so if it was a little um, children, we would actually do a little prayer, but we'll just skip that piece. Wasn't those cool questions? I was going to engage you anyway. So, um, all right, so that was a good children's message. Now let's move on. <laughs> that, that was good. All right. uh, I'm telling you, if Joey was here, that would have been, that would have been brilliantly done if Joey was here. Actually, do I, oh, geez, that's okay. We just did children's message without her. The series of questions. You would have had to answer them for anyway. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, last week, we discussed Jesus' love as a human. Remember, I couldn't find a perfect song to begin that. I had a couple that we tried. But now today, we're talking about Jesus, the divine love and Savior. Now, this kind of love is connected to the belief, those questions that you just heard, um, a children's message, and trust. And when we have that belief and trust, we want to do something with it. 
we, we want to shout for the Lord. So we're going to have a song sung. If I was a singer, I'd be singing it, but I can't. So I need the mic. I brought a singer in. So let me just set this up again. If we have a belief and trust in something, we want to do something about it. So if we have this belief and trust in who Jesus is, we want to shout it as loud as we can. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the sums it all up. Shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. That chorus sums it up. In fact, I don't have much to say because of that chorus, but there's a few things I have to say. Today's scripture is probably the most quoted, most used, and the most misunderstood. It is used to justify abuse, used to condemn others, used to judge, which is the exact opposite of what the verse is about. It is a verse that when you are low, beaten down, tired, exhausted, feeling broken hearted, feeling like you have no clue how to move forward, when the tears overcome the joy, when the abuse is too much, when our emotional and mental states are frazzled, we've all been there, right? Can I get an amen? Amen. When it seems our decisions are crumbling in front of us, when what we want isn't happening, when the pain is too great, when another doctor's appointment does nothing. We've all been there, right? Amen? When we're at our lowest in our lives, and we're at the lowest of our lows, this verse, this verse can lift us up. This verse we can trust and live on God's divine love of all. The divine love of giving everything. This verse can create in us a way forward, optimizing and shouting to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Let all the earth, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the king. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. There it is. At the sound of God's name, there is joy and love. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you. Forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Nothing compares. This verse is key to happiness. This verse is key to theology. This verse we heard today is why I am here today and why I've never let the world overcome me. But it's come close several times. It's why I problem solve, why I worry little, and why I'm optimistic for the most part. And when I have friends tell me I'm not being optimistic, when I'm low, I know I've stopped believing in this verse. When have you stopped believing in this verse? You see, that's the key word, believing. So let's see if we can understand this verse. 
It's in the word so, and it's in the word love. First, the Greek word agape, which most of us have heard before, but you see, this word is central to a theme of completely giving, giving unconditionally. This word agape of love is not just a friendship love, it is a complete giving unconditionally of all love. That's God giving us all the love, giving unconditionally. Amen? And now this word, so, one commentary describes this word this way. The word so is not trying to describe how great God's love is, which is, in my mind, what we typically talk about with this verse. But this commentary goes on to say it describes the way in which God loved the world to completely give of God's self in the form of Jesus, which is what we call God's only son. God gave completely the fullness of God in Jesus was given to us. When we believe this and we live this, how can we not shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. When we believe this and live this, how can we not shout power and majesty, praise to the king? When we believe this and live this, how, how can we not say mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of God's name? How can we not, when we believe this verse, not say, I sing for joy at the work of God's hands and forever, God, I'll love you, forever I'll stand because nothing compares to the love you have for me. The word believe, what does that mean? See, it's easy to believe and not do something. It's easy to know something and not follow through. I mean, let me explain. You, you see this gut here, right? The 60 pounds worth of flesh and fat. This overweightness that I carry. Now, I know what I should do. I know about exercise and eating right. So why don't I? Because it's around a belief of worthlessness, a belief of I don't understand, I don't deserve to be healthy, a belief that eating is comfort and I need comfort. You see, beliefs work in our subconscious, in our unawareness, in our unexpressed ways of thinking, but yet these beliefs that work in the subconscious directly connect to our actions. Our beliefs are shown in our actions. So what beliefs do you have that holds you back? We all have them. You see, in the Gospel of John, here is a section up front in the Gospel that describes the way to believe in God or Jesus, a way to believe in this divine love. The way to believe in this divine love is to change our perspective, to be reborn, so to speak. And that's an everyday event. For how often on our day do we not see God's divine love? But yet what we see is our scars we carry, our fears, our losses, our concerns. How often in our day are we broken and exhausted and feeling unheard and that life is just too hard to manage and we do not see God's divine love? How often in our life do our illnesses and our pain overtake us. This gospel is doing what no other gospel does or did. It helps us understand the incarnation. It helps us to understand God's love. But to understand God's love, the requirement is to believe it every second of your day. And that seems and may be impossible. But when you and I believe it, when you and I embrace it, that no matter what is happening in our lives, when we have lows, when we have pain, when we have loss, when we have struggles, when we have worries, when we, when we believe this, that so God loved this world, nothing matters. And we break out into chorus, shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the king. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. 
I will sing joy. No matter what is going on in our lives, when we believe this verse, we will sing for joy at the work of God's hands in our life, even in the middle of turmoil and distress. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand, will shout, because nothing compares to God's love to us. Do you believe these verses? That when you're sad, these verses turns your sadness into joy? That's hard, isn't it? And sometimes I can't do that. Sometimes I have to be reminded of these verses to help me do that. What will it take for you to change that sadness to joy? For some, there's just no belief in this verse. So joy and happiness is elusive. Or are you the one who believes in this verse and yet joy and happiness are still elusive? See, believing in this verse is believing a love that isn't human and living that love. Believing in this verse means to change our perspective, to change how you and I see things, to see something new is to ask yourself, what can I do? Instead of focusing on what I don't have or can't do, you see, this church has begun a shift. And it The shift continues because we are living out a belief of this verse. We're not there yet, but we are living out the belief of this verse. When I first got here, I heard a lot about what we can't do. And all I gently said, sometimes not so gently, let's not talk about what we can't do. Let's talk about what we can do. That's what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus. Don't come to me and say one thing. Show me how you believe this. Because of Nicodemus' beliefs, he could not. So what about you? What shift in your life right now do you need to live out the belief of this verse? Believing in this verse, there is only one outcome. Believing in this verse, in our lowest times of our life, in our concerns, in our worries, in our pain, in our scarcity, in our losses... In not seeing our dreams take the form we want, in our aging, in our problems, in the problems of this world, believing in this verse during those times, there is only one outcome. Shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing, power and majesty, praise to the king, mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. So let us hear that one more time. And as you hear it one more time, think and consider how you believe in this verse right now in your life. What do you need to do to be able to shout to the Lord, Believing in this verse regardless of what's going on in your life. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the sea. joy at the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Amen and amen. And so now, 
Am I I'm on? I am on. And now what we get to do is share in this table. <clears throat> a table that is open to all, no matter who you are, what you've done, what you haven't done. This table is for all. And so we're going to share the liturgy. It is in your bulletins. In addition, um, what we're going to do is just one little difference in today's um, getting communion. As um, you get communion, the garbage cans over here, what we're also going to set up over here is a table for the offering. And so we're just going to kind of combine them into one because of timing so that you don't have to um, worry too much on how long it's going to take. Um, Anne's going to go grab the, the thing for me. So um, we will do that. Remember that when we are in front of this table, it's what we are bringing to God and when we are behind the table, it's what God is bringing to us. God is bringing unconditional love Amen. to you. And so, everyone have their liturgy out? Let us begin. The Holy One be with you. And also with you. Open your hearts to the one who is love. Open, open our, our hearts, hearts to you, you O God. God. Let us give thanks to God, our life, breath. Thank you. With gratitude, O God, we remember that it is through you we are made truly alive. Every creature and creation, the tiny ones, the scaly ones, the human ones, the leafy ones, all that is has, all that is has been shaped by you. There is nothing on this earth that has not been touched by your sacred hand. In your love for us, you claim us individually and as a whole. As your beloved, you, you will for us life abundant. And you invite us into co-working with you towards a world where harmony among all life is restored. Together, let us shout praises to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, God Almighty. Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And yet daily we turn away from you and one another. Destructive and divisive powers lure us away from connection and relationship. We forget that we need each other. We pretend that our lives are not deeply entangled. When injustice threatens our neighbors, we too easily cower or hide. Like those who turned on Jesus when things became too difficult, we too are tempted to desert those most vulnerable. Together, together let us shout praises to you. Holy, 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 holy though, though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sin thy glory may not see, only, only thou art holy. There is none beside me, perfect in power, in love and purity. But you do not abandon us to our fear or sin. In the life of Jesus, love enfleshed, we are shown that the invitation to join in your work of transforming and healing and restoring is always open. No matter our past, no matter our regrets, no matter the wrong done to us or the wrong we have done to others, you keep calling us back to you. This relentless invitation of yours that entices with freedom and joy and forgiveness is such a threat to the world that it still attempts to crucify every incarnation of your love today. And so we are reminded of the example given to us in the human and divine Jesus on the night of his arrest. He gathered around table with his companions. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup after the supper saying, this cup that is poured out is the new covenant. And so in remembrance of the one who never gave up on love, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. 
to pour out your spirit on this bread and this cup, both here and virtually, that through these ordinary gifts, we may taste a glimpse of your kingdom and kingdom. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. May they be for us a reminder of what we are capable of becoming and what we are capable of accomplishing together in Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glories is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so, when we together break this bread... When we choose to come together in unity to break bread, we are reminded of how Christ broke his body for you. And in this remembrance, we know God loves us. And likewise, this cup is a cup of love, a cup of salvation, a cup that can never be taken away from you. And so, like I said, this table is set. Let us first do communion for those worshiping virtually. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We'll have the um, uh, band come forward first. Thank you, Terry. And then the ushers will help kind of coordinate everything. There'll be one line that'll come here. You'll take it. Um, offering now is here. And then the trash can to uh, dispose of your cup.
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the ability to be able to give to your kingdom, God. We bless those who were able to give and those who wanted to give but did not have the means. And God, we just ask in your mighty, marvelous name, your increasing name, that you will enhance and increase in abundance this offering, God, that it will do all it needs to do to uphold your kingdom here, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God has done so much for us that it's almost impossible to count all the blessings. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all you've done for us, all your blessings you continue to give us. And we thank you for new songs like this one that offer us new ways to praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for the small things like me and her, unfortunately. For some nights and fireflies and the sound of my old six string. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings if I still got breath in these lungs. And that's all I need to get down on my knees and be thankful for all that he's done. For my mama, for my friends, for your love that never ends. For the songs that make us dance on this old dirt floor. For my babies, for my girl, for the way they changed my world. Waking up today, yeah, I just gotta say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, I just wanna say, thank you, Lord. Oh, now. Thank you, Lord, for the hard times, for lighting the way in the dark times, for pulling me in, for giving again. The times that I took it too far, I gotta thank you for keeping me humble. Picking me up when I stumble And although I change, you stay the same And I don't say thank you enough For my mama, for my friends For your love that never ends For the songs that make us dance On this old dirt floor For my babies, for my girl For the way they change my world Waking up today I just gotta say thank you, Lord I just wanna say thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord. Raise up, eyes closed. One thing I know. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For my mama, for my friends, for your love that never ends, for the songs that make us dance on the soldier floor. For my babies, for my girl, for the way they changed my world. Waking up today, yeah, I just gotta say, thank you, Lord. Raise up, eyes closed. One thing I need. I just wanna thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise up, eyes closed. One thing I know. I just wanna say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That's a new song, isn't it? Yeah. It was awesome, awesome. So as you go forward from this place, know that the love that God has for you is like any kind of human love that's out there. And may that love change how you believe in Christ and believe in God. And may that change be one that you take out in this world. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Go eat some cake. Enjoy the fellowship. Have a great Labor Day weekend. See you later. Am I being up there? That's awesome. For my mama, for my friends, for your love that never ends, for the songs that make us dance on the soldier floor, for my babies, for my girl, for the way they changed my world, waking up today, I just gotta say, thank you, Lord, praise our eyes for one thing I know. I just want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord.